A look ahead for August 2021. Astrological highlights and festivals. A very warm welcome to everyone. I'm Swami Nivali, a Pillai Center teacher and an Astrovet astrologer. Today's topic is looking at a few of the astrological highlights and festivals during August 2021. The dates I mention are based on North America timings. Dates may be the same or different in other parts of the world, such as Asia. When August begins, the sun will still be in Cancer, where he remains until mid-August. The sun in Cancer helps us develop a relationship with the goddess and to live her consciousness of love, abundance, intelligence, and positive manifesting. Monday, August 2nd, will be Adi Periku in North America. In Tamil tradition, this festival is celebrated on the 18th day of the Tamil month of Adi. This usually falls on August 2nd in the Western calendar. Adi Periku is a celebration of water, honoring the purifying qualities of water and the importance of rain for fertility of land and success in agriculture. During Adi Periku, Lakshmi, goddess of abundance, and Kubera, the banker in heaven, are often invoked to bless all of humanity with peace, prosperity, and happiness. Adi Periku is a time to sincerely pray to recover from any losses or setbacks that have occurred in our lives and in society as a whole. Adi Periku is considered a highly auspicious day to have our authentic desires fulfilled and for our lives to be enriched with increased abundance. Tuesday, August 3rd, will be an Ekadasi, an 11th moon phase. All 11th moons are an auspicious time to connect with Vishnu for wealth. Ekadasi is a very good time to remain open and alert and to ask for financial blessings and abundance. A mantra to invoke the wealth creation aspects of Vishnu is Om Narayanaya Vidmahe Vasudevaya Dimahi Tano Vishnu Prachodaya. Thursday, August 5th is a 13th waning moon, a Pradosham. Pradoshams are a time when we can dissolve negative karmas through the compassion of the divine. When a Pradosham falls on a Thursday, a day ruled by Jupiter, who is called Guru in Sanskrit, it is known as Guru Pradosham. A Guru or teacher is one who removes the darkness of ignorance. Guru Pradosham is a fantastic opportunity to reset our lives. Spiritual practices on this day can clear previous negative karma that has been blocking the blessings or grace of our guru reaching us. This Pradosham window is our chance to open ourselves to fresh teachings or lessons from teachers, educators, mentors, or wise persons who can counsel us. Saturday, August 7th, will be a special new moon called Adi Amavasya. This is one of the three most important new moons each year. Adi Amavasya is the new moon in the Tamil month of Adi. This new moon will be on a day ruled by Saturn, while the moon is in Pushya, a star ruled by Saturn, and a star of enlightenment and blessings. Pushya is the most spiritually auspicious of all the stars. The combination of both the day and the star being ruled by Saturn gives additional intensity to rituals performed during this new moon to honor the contributions of our ancestors. Some people may wish to do simple tarpanum practice during daylight hours, as taught by Dr. Pillai. Tarpanum helps our ancestors move into higher planes of light where they can send blessings into the family. Fasting and tarpanum can be done during this new moon although tarpanum can only be done 
during daylight hours in your local area. We thank our ancestors for their contributions in our lives, and we pray for peace for their souls. On Sunday, August 8th, Mercury enters Leo. In this environment, Mercury can help us be more conscious to take intelligent action when communicating. Mercury can assist us in making improvements in management of our business matters or anything related to communication, including writing or speaking. He can encourage us to have some interactions with friendly people and also help us in developing more spiritual discernment. On Wednesday, August 11th, Venus enters Virgo. Virgo is a very practical sign and Venus is the planet that helps us make decisions about what things are worth to us in terms of our time, money, and energy. We can ask Venus to help us evaluate our choices of how we spend our time, our money, and our energy, and bring more light into our selections. For some people, this may mean becoming more generous in attitude. Wednesday, August 11th, and Thursday, August 12th, will be two special snake festivals. Dr. Pillai has said in Vedic astrology, the shadow planets are called Rahu and Ketu. In the mythology of Vedic astrology, they are snakes that create a significant impact in the lives of people. The snake festivals can especially benefit people who deal with some form of influence from Rahu or Ketu. These days are known as Naga Chaturthi and Naga Panchami. Naga means snake. Chaturthi refers to the fourth moon and Panchami refers to the fifth moon. These festivals are dedicated to the invocation of snake gods or Nagas. The Nagas are ancient mystical snake beings who know secrets about cycles of time and have great wisdom. They also have the power to cast or remove curses. Blessings from the Nagas can improve the general welfare of us and our families, improve overall abundance, and help safeguard from poisonous influences on many levels. Pacifying the Nagas can get rid of curses accrued from ancestors via soul genetics and enable us and our families to carry more positive spiritual DNA. On Monday, August 16th, the sun will enter Leo. The sun rules Leo, a zodiac sign symbolized by the lion, the king of the jungle. The sun in Leo can bring royalty consciousness and courage. This is a good time to work with power in positive ways and to develop leadership skills. The sun is also a planet of life-affirming energies, so it is an excellent time to improve habits of health in diet, exercise program, sleep patterns, and so on. It is a favorable time for resolving any issues with the government. Leo is a fixed sign, and the sun's movement into a fixed sign is celebrated as Vishnupati, a festival associated with wealth blessings from Vishnu. Wednesday, August 17th through the 18th, will be an 11th moon phase, also known as Ekadasi. As mentioned earlier, all 11th moons are an auspicious time to connect with Vishnu and to use his wealth creation mantra. The moon will be in Mula star, a star ruled by Ketu, and a star said to be aligned with our own galactic center. Mula is associated with deep foundational energies. Thursday, August 19th, will be another Guru Pradosham. This time, the moon will be in Uttarashada star, a star of enlightenment and prosperity. This will be an excellent day to cut limes or lemons, do karma removal chants such as Tyranny Lacantum, and pour milk over a lingam sometime during the hour and a half period before sunset. Friday, August 20th, is a special 14th moon for Nataraj Abhishekam. This is a time to pour water, 
juice and milk over a Nataraj, dancing Shiva statue, or Shiva Lingam, or any statue of Shiva, and chant Om Namah Shivaya. Also Friday, August 20th, is Varalakshmi Vratam, a boon bestowing Friday. This is an auspicious day to invoke Goddess Lakshmi in her form as Varalakshmi, who specializes in granting boons and wishes. Vara means boon, and Lakshmi in this form is a wish fulfiller. Vratam means fasting, so observing some form of fasting on this day helps facilitate deeper connection with Vara Lakshmi. However, always follow any guidance from your medical practitioner as to whether physical fasting is appropriate for you. In modern times, techno fasting or unplugging from various electronic devices and spending some time in nature is another form of fasting, which helps calm the brain and helps recovery from mental fatigue. Flowers have great purity and offering flowers to Vara Lakshmi can enable prayers to reach into the Akash or causal plane. Vara Lakshmi's grace can bless us with fulfillment of wishes. Saturday, August 21st is a full moon with the moon in Danishta, a star of prosperity and music. Every full moon is always a good day for some Shreembrizi chanting and energizing our goals for material plane manifestations. Saturday, August 21st, is also a celebration of Hayagriva's birthday, an incarnation of Vishnu depicted with a human body and a horse's head. He incarnated to restore the Vedas from demons who stole them, so he is known to restore wisdom from the clutches of ignorance. His blessings are sought when starting the study of both sacred and secular subjects, and his energy is most readily available on his birthday. He is celebrated as the teacher of Saraswati, a feminine archetype of education. Dr. Pillai has taught a simple practice to chant Hayagriva's name three times and pause. Hayagriva, Hayagriva, Hayagriva. This is one set. Again, chant his name three times and pause. Hayagriva, Hayagriva, Hayagriva. This is second set. Do 108 sets of this or more. We ask his blessings for all our educational endeavors and for more light to come into all forms of education on this planet. Wednesday, August 25th, is a fourth waning moon phase and a great day to invoke Ganesha to remove obstacles with some coconut breaking and a simple chant such as Om Gum Ganeshaya Namaha. Thursday, August 26th, Mercury enters Virgo, a sign he rules and a sign where he is exalted or most strong. In this location, he can help us be more precise in our communication. In addition, he can illuminate anything we do with numbers, accounting, and mathematics. In the modern age, Mercury is considered the planet that rules electronics and computers and devices. For people looking to purchase a new computer or device, this is a favorable time to look at your options and consider what is practical for you. Sunday, August 29th, is Krishna's birthday. Krishna is a divine incarnation of wealth archetype Vishnu. He gave divine teachings to his student Arjuna in the ancient story of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna and his wife Radha are said to dissolve poverty consciousness. They demonstrate a relationship of pure bliss and represent the oneness of human and God. During Krishna's birthday, his energy is most available for miracles, first in our material circumstances and next in our spiritual development. One mantra for Krishna is Hari Bol Radhe Bol. We can chant this and offer five Tulsi leaves 
or basil leaves to a statue or picture of Krishna and Radha and ask for a monetary blessing and more light. Please let us know in the comments if this kind of monthly overview video is helpful. Please press the like button and subscribe to the Pillai Center Practice Channel. The entire Pillai Center team is wishing you well. Thank you.